Back with another lesson. Lord, will it be edifying? I want to start by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh. By Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Wahar Kakodash, Barakat the Yahweh, Barakat the Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and elders, a great millstone who taught me this truth. And Shalom to you, Akim, and Akwaf that believe and have faith in Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, in these last days. Praying to be a part of the hopeful elect. Uh, this this uh, video, we're going to go into World War Three, man. And as you see on the screen, you see Putin. We do not want to cause a third war, world war, which there will be no winners, man. And this is what he said in, the, um, uh, I guess, an interview or a meeting this, uh, just yesterday. We have never given up on negotiations that could lead to a peaceful settlement. During the negotiations in Istanbul, we signed this document. They just threw it away afterwards. That's all. The U.S. holds the key to a peaceful solution to the Ukrainian conflict. If they really want to negotiate, all they need to do is to stop supplying weapons to Kyiv. The U.S. pretends that it is not afraid of an escalation of the conflict in Ukraine, but there are many people in America with clear minds who do not want to cause a third world war in which there will be no winners. Yeah, and ultimately, man, uh, World War Three will be started when Israel attacks Iran. And that's I'm just speaking as a man. I can't tell you for sure. That's gonna be yeah, you said it was gonna No, nah, but I'm I'm pretty sure that's gonna be the, the turning point of the world World War Three, man. It's already pretty much started, but that's gonna get it really going and all nations are gonna come to fight. And we're gonna get into this video. I'm not gonna read all the headings, but this is right here like three minutes long. And it's gonna you know basically outline that no one is uh um talking about the, the missiles anymore they, they're not even communicating about how many missiles they have um on any any mishaps in other words they will say about these missiles being shot off man so they're not they're not uh communicating about the the missile their missiles and the movement of their missiles man u.s national security advisor jake sullivan has accused beijing of failing to notify washington about recent upgrades in china's nuclear arsenal it has declined to share the size and scope of its nuclear forces or to provide launch notifications. And it has not shown much interest in discussions regarding the changes it is making to its nuclear forces. Simply put, we have not yet seen a willingness from the PRC to compartmentalize strategic stability from broader issues in the relationship. And that compartmentalization, as I noted before, has been the bedrock of nuclear security, indeed strategic stability, for decades. Well, let's get into the details now from our New York correspondent, Caleb Morpin. Caleb, good to see you. So what else did the U.S. National Security Advisor have to say? And what has China's stance been on this issue so far? Well, as the National Arms Control meeting proceeds, Jack Sullivan, or Jake Sullivan, came forward and proposed engaging China in discussions of strategic stability and nuclear risks. Here's what he had to say. I believe that the PRC could make the bold decision to engage directly with the United States in discussions of strategic stability and nuclear risk. Uh, and that it would be the responsible thing to do for the benefit of our two countries, and as I said before, for the benefit of the wider world. Now, the United States has long been trying to assert some kind of control and oversight into China's nuclear arsenal. As China rises as a country, the United States continues to see it as a threat and as a rival. Um, but it's important to note uh, that making nuclear agreements with the United States may not be something many countries want to do, as the United States has been withdrawing from these agreements. Uh, you'll recall that in 2019, the United States withdrew from the Intermediate Nuclear Forces Treaty. Uh, in 2020, the Open Skies Agreement uh, was withdrawn from by the United States. And just yesterday, we saw the United States actually stop sharing information regarding its nuclear arsenal. The United States stopped sharing information with other countries on its own nuclear practices. So engaging China in a meeting and trying to assert some U.S. control or U.S. oversight into China's nuclear arsenal is something that the United States is going to have quite a bit of difficulty selling to the world as 
Uh, at this point, the United States has withdrawn from so many nuclear agreements and proved to not be very reliable in its own reporting and its own transparency regarding the issue of nuclear weapons. Caleb, many thanks for the update. That's RT's Caleb Morgan speaking to us live from New York. Thank you. See, they're not communicating about these missiles, man. So they're basically telling you that these missiles are going to be shot off, man. And no one is going to be able to stop biblical prophecy, man. World War III from coming to pass. No one is going to be able to stop that. I got one more video I want to put up. I should have put it up in the beginning. That um, America's also, they're also hiding their missiles, man. And they're, they're, they're sending them off. Let's get this pulled up. They sent they sent them off into into uh, several different uh, strategic parts of the world, man, for them to be shot off. We are back with exclusive news. The International Company for the Elimination of Nuclear Weapons, ISAN, says the U.S. has secretly deployed 150 nuclear warheads to its air bases in Europe. The Americans placed nuclear bombs in Turkey, Belgium, Italy, Germany, and the Netherlands. ICANN experts also noted that the U.S. budget spending on nuclear weapons exceeds the total spending of the eight countries that have nuclear deterrence forces and amounts to $43.7 billion. The United States is in the process of updating its entire arsenal. We invite you to follow the channel to receive all new. See? Biblical prophecy is for these missiles to be shot off man, into the ends of the world. And at the same time, it says when World War III starts, and this is what's going to happen as well, man. All hell is going to break loose, man, in Babylon the Great, which is America. What is your first response when the power goes out? If you are dependent on technology as much as most of the first world is today, your first answer would probably be, I would just start looking at my phone. But what if that option was off the table? We are now dependent on electricity more than ever, and it is a part of our daily lives in almost every little detail. The light in our house, the elevators we ride, the food we cook wouldn't be possible without power. Even the vehicles we use are expected to be replaced by their electric counterparts. All of these make you think, what would happen if we didn't have electricity for a long time? Before we start getting into the topic, we need to set some ground rules. How a global blackout would play out would depend on what caused the blackout in the first place. Did all the power stations stop working due to a natural disaster all of a sudden? In this scenario, we are going to assume that an EMP-like weapon went off on Earth and took out all power and electric devices. Let's say such an event happened, and a weapon the likes of which we have never seen before went off on Earth. What would be the first effects? Electromagnetic pulse attack, which would literally destroy the country's capacity to function. If the power crisis in Venezuela in 2019 has taught us anything, it is that the modern world is not prepared for long-term power outages. The whole world would slowly realize how much we need electricity. The first couple of minutes would likely be fine. We would just think this is a local power outage, the result of a maintenance effort by the government. But when we notice that our smartphones also stopped functioning, we would come to grips with the fact that this is no regular power outage. The lack of internet and other communications methods would mean we wouldn't even realize this is a global problem. The subways would stop functioning properly, and people inside would have to walk to the nearest stop without any lights. Without traffic lights, jams and chaos would start to sweep the urban streets in a matter of hours. Populations in most cities would rush to their homes for further news that might never come. Maybe the ugliest part of human nature is the fact that in times of crisis, we want individual security by any means necessary. That means stores in every neighborhood would soon come under looting. In a matter of days, the local law enforcement establishments would be stretched thin in cities full of looting, rioting, and no communication. This lack of coordination in the police forces would result in different gangs ruling their own districts fighting over whatever limited resources we have left. Lack of electricity would also mean the stop of water distribution. So, soon after the power outage, we would turn into a much thirstier and dirtier society. People would rush to the nearest body of fresh water and try to stock up. And I mean, and that's going to happen. 
And there's no way around that not happening, man, because that is biblical prophecy. The Lord said it was going to happen, and it's going to happen, man. Started It started um, with one woe, then come two woes, then three. You know what I'm saying? That's woe, woe, woe. World War Three is the last woe, man. And there's no way anyone can turn it back, man. You see the nations are roused up. The Lord warned us of these things, wars and rumors of wars coming to pass. And now we at the time where those wars are going to come to pass, the last world war when it's going to come to pass, the battle of Armageddon. This is uh, Revelation 8, and I'm just going to get the point in verse 13. It says, And I beheld and heard the, the, an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying, with a loud voice, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the vo other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound, man. And those angels are going to sound and World War Three is going to commence, man. And this is the judgment of Esau Edom, man, the judgment of his kingdom, which is Babylon the Great here in America, man. This is, Reve this is Revelation 9, and I'm going to get the point in verse... Uh, 12 it says one woe is passed and behold there come two woes more after or hereafter man so the first tell you the first world war happened now then the second world the world war happened now it's time for the third world war this is uh revelations 11 and i'm gonna drop down to verse 14 it says the second woe is passed and behold, the third world cometh quickly. And that third world war is coming quicker than we know it. And you see the Lord outlined three world wars. And now he said, after the second world war came to pass, behold, the third world cometh quickly. And we see that woe, the last woe is built up, man. The Lord is building this last, the last scene in the world wars. He's building up, man, like a, a a movie never ever well, it's never been seen before. But he's building up where where no one can say it, it ain't gonna happen. It's not gonna happen, man. Cause these nations are ready. Russia, he said he's gonna put the hooks back in the Russians' jaws. And look, Russia is ready to fight, man. Let's get that. It's Jeremiah fifty one. Cause uh, those Russians, they're ready to fight, man. And they know that the Babylon the Great is basically uh, causing this, causing the wars to intensify, man. They're, they could have been, they said that they could have been, stopped the wars, but they keep pushing them, man. They keep poking the bear. This is Jeremiah 51, and I'm going to start at verse 11. It says, make bright the arrows, gather the shields. Yahweh by Shem Yahushua have raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes, man. And the Russians are the Medes in the scriptures, man. They they inhabit that land over where the Medes you know, used to dwell, man. So he's talking about the Russians, man. Let me read that one more time. Make bright the arrows, meaning the missiles. Break bright the arrows. Gather the shields. Yahweh by Shem Yahushai hath raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes, man. See, he raised them up, man, to fight, man. For his devices is against Babylon. See that? He's he The Lord is raising up the, the, uh, the spirit of the kings of the Medes. To go against Babylon, man. And um, Putin is telling you, man, this is going to happen, man. He didn't want to start it, but he's gonna have to, it's ha it has to happen, man. So he raised those men up to have in their minds to go against Babylon the Great, man, which is America, man. 11, one more time, it says, Make bright the arrows, gather the shields. Yahweh Bashem Yahushai have raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes, for his device is against Babylon to destroy it. See that? The Lord is telling you he's going to destroy Babylon the Great, which is America, man. Because it is the vengeance of Yahweh by Shem Yahushai, the vengeance of his temple, man. This is the vengeance of Yahweh by Shem Yahushai against Babylon the Great, which is the kingdom of the Edomites, man. The rulers of the world now, man. And uh, Edom, uh, Russians are Edomites as well, but I'm, the Lord has, a, has this against his devices against Babylon. 12, it says, set up, a, set up the standard... Upon the walls of Babylon, make the watch strong, set up the watchmen, prepare, an amb prepare the ambushes. For Yahweh by Shem Yahushua hath both devised and done that which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. See that? 
And we warn you two-thirds to repent, man. And this is against you, you Babylonians, man. And two-thirds of our people have became Babylonians with the so-called Edomites, man, and all the other nations that dwell in the land of Babylon the Great, man. O thou that dwellest in the midst of many waters, abundant in treasures, and America has been abundant in treasures, man. Even though they go and rape, rob, and other, murder other nations, they have abundance of treasures here in Babylon the Great. Thy end is come, and the measure of thy covetousness. To the end of this reign of Esau in Babylon the Great has come to an end. And we're seeing the end right before our eyes. The economy is crashing. World Wars Three is built up to the, to the way they said, draw a fine line where, you know what I'm saying, these, low, these lines are being told very closely, man. Because the Russians are ready to shoot those missiles off, man. But ultimately, the angels are going to shoot those missiles off, man. But he's going to put it in their minds for the Russians to do it. It says, Yahweh Bashem Yahushav hosts have sworn by himself. See, he sworn by himself, saying, Surely I will fill thee with men as with caterpillars, and they shall lift up a shout against thee, man. So you got many, many nations that are gonna come come with Russia against Babylon the Great, man. And their and their judgment is going to be to, to destroy it, man. The judgment of Yahweh by Shem Yahushua against Babylon the Great is to destroy America. Babylon the Great, man. There's no way out but destruction. They can't give the Lord any anything to um, change the judgment. They can't give him a tre uh, any, <laughs> the scripture go into that. They can't give him a, um, anything to pay him off. They can't give him anything to, to stop it from coming. This is going to come, man. And that's why we do these lessons to warn our people to repent. Because these things are already sw spoken, man. The Lord said he has sworn by himself. I just read that. He has sworn by himself. This is uh, Isaiah 13, and I'm going to start at verse, uh, Isaiah 13, I'm going to start at verse 5. It says, uh, they come from a far country, from the ends of the heaven. And it's talking about those missiles. I should have went up a little bit on it, but I don't want to make the lesson long. But I'm going to start right here. It's talking about those missiles, man, and those uh, other nations coming. It says, they come from a far country, from the ends of heaven, even Yahweh by Shem Shah and the weapon of his indignation. See that? What is the weapon of his indignation? Those thermonuclear missiles, man. To destroy the whole land. See that? The Lord wants to destroy the whole land. How ye, for the day of Yahweh by Shem Shah is at hand. And it is at hand, man. These things can happen any day. You know, Esau got a 20, 20, 30 agenda, 20, 25. All these agendas he has are far off. And the Lord is putting the spirit on these people to, to, to speed up, man. Because these wars are have to happen, man. And he he can't he can't dictate the Lord's judgment. The Lord have him a, a certain amount of time that he cannot pass, man. That's in Job, man. It says, How ye, for the day of Yahweh by Shem Shai is at hand. It shall come as a, dest a destruction. From the Almighty. That's that's one of my favorite scriptures right there, man. Isaiah 13 and 6, man. Because the destruction is coming from the Almighty, man. Like I said, man, they can't pay they, they, the scripture tell you that they can't pay the Russians off. They can't pay the Lord off. They can't pay these other nations off, man. This destruction is coming. And there's no way to avoid it. It says, Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt, man. So everybody's gonna be afraid when destruction comes, man. There's no, it's not going to be no turning back. Well, somebody trying to break in your house, trying to get your food, man, or, or, or trying to rob you for for, for any different uh, uh, necessities you have, man. They're gonna they're gonna go in and take what they want, man, because the, the spirit of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh is gonna is gonna put an evil spirit on these people, man, to 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 do exactly the judgments he have on certain people, man. Verse eighty says, and they shall be afraid, prayings and sorrows shall take hold of them. See that? These people are going to be afraid. You think he's, you think Esau and these Edomites are scared now? Wait till all hell break loose. They can't call the police and they can't call and they, they, they white privilege that won't be used. It's going to be a time like never, never, never before, man. No white privilege is going to be used, man, because you're going to have no police in the, in, the, in the streets, man. Eight again, it says, and they shall be afraid. Prayings and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in, in pain as a woman that 
that travaileth, they shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. See, they're going to be very afraid, man, when all hell break loose, man. And this is, like I said, this is not far off, man. This can happen any day. Behold, the day of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh shall cometh, cruel but with wrath and furious anger. The Lord's judgment is going to be poured out, man. And it ain't going to be nice, man. It says to lay the land desolate. It's read it twice, man. The Lord said in verse five, "Going to destroy the whole land." In verse nine, He said, "To the land be to the land be desolate, man." It says, "And He shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it." See, He want to destroy the sinners thereof out of it, man. All you people that didn't believe in Yahweh by Shem Yahushai and didn't want to repent, you're going to be destroyed out of the land of Babylon the Great, man. Ten, it says, "For the stars of heaven." And the, and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. So all you proud motherf motherfuckers is going to be bang. It's going to be over with for you. He's going to cause it to cease. And I will lay low the hauntiness of the terrible, man. And I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man of the gold wages of Ophir, man. So the men of the Lord are going to be precious in that day. But everyone else is going to be in terrible, you're going to be terribly afraid, man. You read that back in verse 8, it says they're going to be terribly afraid. But the Lord says he's going to make a man more precious than fine gold. And it's talking about you men of the Lord that believe in how about Shem Al Shah, that have faith in him. We're going to shine bright, Lord winning in that day. We're not going to be afraid like these uh, other men that didn't take heed of your how about Shem Al Shah's warning. 13, he says, therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of your how about Shem Al Shah of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger, man. So the Lord fierce anger is coming, man. And then no, like I said, man, no one can can say, well, debate about it. You know, there's a lot of cats we want to debate. Well, what the Lord do to it? What it, 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 don't, it ain't going to even matter, man. The Lord fierce anger is coming, man. You're not going to be able to stop the Lord. You can't even stop yourself from getting shot, man. So the Lord has a judgment set up for you, man. That's what it is, man. And there's no debate about it, man. Because the Lord has put it in the mind of the Russians to destroy Babylon the great, man. And the Lord is going to do it. He swore by it. So it has to happen, man. And the Lord don't want us to swear, but he swore. <laughs> See that? The Lord ain't playing, man. This is uh, Ezekiel 38. I'm going to start at verse 1. It says, The word of Yahweh by Shem Yahshai came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief priest, prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against it, man. So we're prophesying what the uh, Russians are going to do, man. Let's look that up real quick, man. Let's get that real quick. There's a lot of people, oh, man, how you going to say it's this? You know what I'm saying? Want to debate and all this. I'm just going to put it right out of the scriptures, man. Gog, land of Magog. Let's look that up. Let's look at the map so you can see for a fact who it is, man. And Esau moved the landmarks. So none of the people are where they're supposed to be. Let's look at it. This is when we see what it say. Gog and Magog. See that? Let's look at the image of the land mass. You see, here's an image right here. Gog and Magog. Right above right Turkey. It's another Gog up here. Russian. It's coming down to Israel. They're showing you it's coming down to Israel because they're going to come down into Israel. This is a biblical prophecy, man. War of Gog and Magog. Biblical prophecy, man. Bible prophecy. And Gog is Russia, man. And uh, Gomer is like, uh, um, be like Turkey. You see another another picture. It's another little picture that kind of shows more of it. And these are all the nations are in, I'm reading now, Ezekiel 38, are going to be coming together with um, Russia, which you see is up here is at the top. And you got uh, Iran, Persia. Um, like I said, it's Turkey, Libya, Kush, Put, 
Meshack, Two Ball. You see, um, a Togomar. All these nations are what I'm reading right now is going to come down to Israel, but also they're going to co come over to Babylon the Great as well, man. Verse three it says, and say, thus said Yahweh by Shem Yahushua power. Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws. And that's what the Lord has done. He put those hooks in the Russians' jaws, man. Because Russia didn't want to fight, man. They was, you know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't going to say what they was doing, but they didn't want to fight, man. So they was pretty much forced to go into the blue and yellow country, man. Because the Lord put those hooks back in their jaws, man. Because they're a warlike nation, man. Esau is a warlike people, man. All they do is fight. So the Lord put the hooks back into the Russians' jaws to put them in the mindset of destroying, man, of war. And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaw, and I will bring thee forth. And all thy army, horses and horsemen, and all them clothed with all sorts of armory, even as great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords, man. So all those nations you see in the pictures, they're going to be handling swords, man. They're going to have all weapons of war ready to fight against Babylon and Great and the land of Israel, man. It says, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them. All of them with swords, which like it, with shields and helmet. Gomer and all his bands and the house of Togoma and the north quarters and all his bands and many people with thee. See that? So he's telling you all these people are going to align with Russia to fight. Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all the company that are assembled with thee un unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. So the Lord telling you that he's going to have Russia to be a guard over these nations to fight, man. So if one of them get targeted, all the nations, just like the NATO, the NATO agreement is, if one nation gets touched, all nations have to fight. And, he, and the Russians are going to be a guard unto the, all these other nations, man. They're going to be protecting all these other nations, man. Drop it down to verse 10. It says, Thus say Yahweh by Shem Yahweh shall power. It shall come to pass that at the same time shall things come into thy mind, and thou shalt think an evil thought. See that? He's talking about those Russians. And I told you, the angels are going to ultimately shoot these missiles off, but he's going to put on the spirit of the Russians and the other nations to push that button. And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages, man. And what's the land of unwalled villages? I'll give you a second. I mean, it's plain, man. Babylon the Great is a land of unwalled villages. And you see Trump, he wanted to build a wall around this place, man. But you see what happened when they, the Title 42 let loose. <laughs> they came right in, man. So the Lord said he's going to put an evil thought in their minds, man. And they're going to go to the land of unwalled villages. And it's talking about Babylon the Great. And these scriptures are plain. And I will go to them that are at rest. See, these people are at rest, man, that dwell safely. Nothing ever, no nation has been touched. Like, uh, no nation had war in their land um, as America, man. No, no, I'm saying, I'm saying, let me rephrase it. America has never had war in their land. So the Lord telling you, the ones that are at rest, and these people are at rest, man. They party, they ain't thinking about no World War III, man. They ain't thinking about going to fight and all that stuff. These, these people are dwelling safely here, man. Nothing ever has happened here. All of them dwelling without walls. See that? This place has no walls. Any nation can come in here and just walk right in, man. And have having their bars nor gates. See? Neither having bars nor gates. See, they, they have no protection, man, from any outside. Man, they got several, man, Chinese motherfuckers coming in, man. And I'm talking about they lining up like they going on a trip. They coming straight in here, man. To take a spoil and to take a prey. See that? They come in to take a spoil and to take a prey, man. To turn thy hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited and upon the people that are gathered with or out of the nations which have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the list of the land, man. It's talking about you Babylonians, man. You've got all these goods, all these treasures here in the world, uh, of the world, and you have them here, man. All nations sell their goods to Babylon the great, man. All of them. 
All of them, you know what I'm saying? You, you buy anything, it comes from China, it comes from India, it comes from Asia, somewhere in Asia. You know what I'm saying? And these nations got rich off America, man. That's how China got so rich, man. They took all the jobs. They didn't want the so-called blacks, Hispanic, and Native Americans to get ahead of the Edomites. So they took all the jobs and sent it over to China, man, and built them up, man. Now, the Chinese are more powerful than the Edomites, man. They're here in Babylon, they're great, man, because they the Lord had them do that so they can to build so they can build the Moab up to destroy them, man. And I remember when I was a child, man, they had all type of factories, man, that our, our people was getting real, you know, getting a lot of money on, man. You had one, uh, your, uh, the, the man of the house, he would work, and the woman in the house, pretty much, she would stay home. Man. I mean, my grandmother, she stayed home, man, and she didn't have to work. My, 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 my grandfather, he made enough money to take care of the whole household, man. They did all the things you would, th you know what I'm saying, had, they had plenty of money, you know what I'm saying, and my, you know, now I look back and it had money to, to me, you know what I'm saying, but it really wasn't no, really no money. But it had, it was able to do the things that certain people couldn't do. You know what I'm saying? I explain it like that, man. But yeah, man, they um, they took the jobs away from the inner city, man, because you had man lower income housing. You had factories in the middle of the damn, uh, the middle of the damn neighborhood, man. And people, you know, worked there 20, 30 years, man. But Esau took all those jobs out of sent them to China, man. You know what I'm saying? For the, that that cheap labor, now and built them up. Now they pretty much overtook the Edomites, man. They took overtook you, Esau, man. And the Lord set them up to destroy you, man, because He said Moab is going to be a wash pot over you, Edomites, man. And that's ultimately <laughs> your judgment is coming from your own people, which are the Edomites and Russians and the other surrounding nations, and also Moab, man. Man, the Lord is beautiful, man. He set the movie up perfect. And this is the weapon that's coming, man. This is uh, Isaiah fifty-four. Get the point in verse 16, it says, Behold, I created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. I have created the waster to destroy, man. So the Lord telling you, he's made these missiles to be shot off, man. Those missiles that they've been making and they put up and, you know what I'm saying, hot hit them and put them here and put them there. The Lord, no, nah, man, the Lord has those weapons prepared for a certain day, a certain time, and a certain hour for them to be shot off, man, into the ends of the earth, man. And this is the judgment of Esau Edom, man. This is your first curse. This is uh, Malachi um, 4, and I'm just get the point in verse 1. It says, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith Yahweh by Shem Yahweh hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch, man. So you're not going to have no kids, no no, no one to, to, to build you up again, man. Only ones that's going to be left to be rounded up and to put in a hardcore slavery first is the elite of Esau. And he's going to bring back his own nation, man. But it's not going to leave, you're not going to have no, um, well... John that worked at um, such and such, he's been there for 30 years. He got a nephew coming and he's going to work here. No, man, the Lord said he's going to leave you neither root nor branch, man. You're not going to have no roots, you know what I'm saying, where your, where your, your people come from. You ain't going to know that you stayed in Tennessee and <laughs> your, your uncle stayed up in uh, North Carolina and he got a business up there going. No, man, the Lord said he's going to leave you neither root nor branch, man. Yeah, you see, Esau knows his history, man. He knows where his, his family comes from. He knows it came from Europe, and um, and they 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 lived in Germany for so many years, and his great grandmother, yeah, he know all of that, man. But the Lord is going to leave you neither root nor branch, man. You're not going to know where your beginnings is, but we're going to know the hopeful elect, and we're going to remind you, remind you of that in the kingdom, man. You're going to let you know that Esau is is your forefather, man. You're Edomite, man, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna enforce that <laughs> on every Edomite, like they did to us, man. They, they called us um, N word, spicks, all these different byword names, and we're gonna put that on you. Esau Edom is gonna be the worst thought about person on the planet, man. That day, this is um, Second Ezra sixteen, and um, let's start at verse twelve. It says, "The earth quaketh." And the foundation thereof, and the sea ariseth up with waves from the deep, and the waves of it are terrible, and the fishes thereof also. 
before Yahweh Bashem Yahushai and before the glory of his power. For strong is his right hand that beneath the bow. See that? His arrows that are sh sh um, the arrows that he shooteth are sharp. And that's going into those missiles, man. The arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss. See that? That's why I said the angels are going to guide those missiles, man. They are not going to miss exactly where the Lord want them to be. They want to be <laughs> want them to land at, man. And a dream last night, man. I don't know where it was, but I seen the detonation of a, a, a missile, man. I seen the nuke, man. I didn't see the missile go off. I just seen the destruction that was left after the missile hit, man. And I was like, man, I don't know where that came from, but I seen it. I wouldn't hurt anything. I was looking like I was looking through third person. But I seen the destruction of the missile, man, and it was devastating, man. It was a big-ass crater that you would think, like, in the moon, you know what I'm saying? Like, you see them craters on the moon, not saying that's the moon, but you, you see them craters in the moon, and you like, it's a big-ass destruction. And I seen that in my, my dream, man. But I can't remember everything that went on, but I remember seeing the destruction of a missile in my dream, man. Back to um, uh, 13, it says, For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow. His arrows that are that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world, man. So the Lord is going to shoot those missiles from across the world over to Babylon and Great, man. And, he, and um, Babylon and Great is going to get some missiles off. As you see, they still they moving their missiles around too, but they're not going to be able to protect this land, man. This land is my land. All that bullshit we had to listen to growing up, man. It's over with from California to the they say the New York Island. I forgot that song go, man. I had to sing that shit as a little kid, man. It says, Behold, the plagues are sent. See, through the spirit, the missiles are already sent, man. The mirror <laughs> It's beautiful, man. The spirit of the Lord is already sending these missiles off, man. And shall not return again until they come upon the earth. See that? So when they shoot those missiles off in the physical. They're not going to be able to stop them from hitting. Because they said the Lord said they're not going to miss. They sharp. They're not going to miss. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out until it consumes the foundation of the earth. Woo! So it's going to consume the foundation of the earth, man. It's not going to put, be put out. The fires are not going to be put out on fire department. No, no shit like that, man. They can't even put out wildfires. When the whole land of Babylon, three, four, five thousand square foot, it's not going to be put out, man. For you, for the fire is kindled and shall not be put out until it consume the foundation of the earth, man. So the foundation of Babylon the Great is talking about not the whole entire earth, just found the foundation of Babylon the Great. It's not the fire is not going to be put out. It's going to consume the whole land of Babylon the Great. Verse sixteen it says, like as an arrow which is shot by a mighty uh, by the mighty archer returneth not backwards. See that they're not going to when they shoot those missiles off, it's over with. That's ball game. Even so, the plagues, even so, listen now, even so, the plagues that shall be sent upon the earth shall not return again. See that? The Lord gave you an illustration of a, a mighty archer shooting an arrow, and those mighty archers are bad, man. You know what I'm saying? They, man, I've seen videos with the archers, man. Them motherfuckers back. Shit, just imagine back in the day. The Lord illustrated a mighty archer, man. So those mighty archers, man, they shoot those arrows, and they shit. They, some of them go shit fast as... Fast, man, I can't even tell you how fast they go, but they go real fast. But the Lord gave you an illustration of what will happen if the mighty archer shoot his arrows. It's not going to return backwards. So is the plagues. They're not going <laughs> to They're not gonna return backwards, man. They're not going to return, man. So the time to repent is near. It's, look, I ain't so lucky. I mean, the time to repent is now. Because 200 million missiles are going to be shot upon Babylon and Great, man. And it's not gonna. There's no escape out of that. There's not. A, that's not an escape route. There's, there's no way out of it. You don't get you a bunker or whatever you want to get. It's gonna be <laughs> pointless because you're gonna be cooked in that bunker that you buy. And uh, those missiles are gonna consume the foundation of Babylon the Great. Flock you. One last scripture. This is Revelation 9, and I'm going to start at verse, uh, let's start at verse 16. It says, and the number of the arm army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. See that? He's talking about missiles, man. 200 million missiles. Because those missiles have multiple warheads. 
But when all those, Russia has over 7,000 missiles, missiles, nuclear missiles, man. That's probably not accounting the, uh, the, the new technology they have with um, hypersonic missiles. But not only them, all the other nations that have missiles. Man, you got North Korea, shit, um, China. You know what I'm saying? You got, man, I ain't going to name all of them. Shit, you should know, man. And we, we put that information up every day, man. You, shit, you probably know more than I do. How many missiles I, more than I do? You know what I'm saying? But we know for a fact that it's going to be 200 million missiles. Because it's saying it right here, man. It's talking about the armies. And that's the Lord's army, man. Those missiles is. 16 again, it says, And the number of the army of the of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. And I heard the number of them. And thus, I saw the horsemen in the vision. And them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and of jacet and of brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions. See that? This is a vision he was given. And he explained it the way he seen it, man. He explained a missile having breastplates of fire and jacet and brimstone. And he said the heads of them were like lions. So the heads of a lion is what you know, they had that bite. You know what I'm saying? To bite you, man. So when you see the head of a lion, you're going to run, man. Because you know that what is coming afterward. <laughs> he gonna, if you see a lion and he take off running after you, what it's going to do? It's going to bite you, man. So he gave you an illustration of what he was seeing in the vision, man. He says, whereas the heads of lions and out of their mouths issued fire. See that? The out of his mouth issued fire. So he's explaining to you as it was a lion that was, <laughs> that his biting was fire. <laughs> and smoke and brimstone. There's 200,000 thousands of them, man. By these three was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issue out of their mouths, man. So he's telling you the issue out of their mouth was those missiles, man. Those thermonuclear missiles. For the power is in their mouth. See that? The missile warhead has plenty of warheads. They have decoy warheads inside the warheads, man. So the Lord gave you a vision through John the Revelator explaining to you how the heads of those missiles were. He says, and out of the mouth, and uh, was the issue out of the mouth, of their mouth, for their power is in their mouth and they're in their tails. See that? So it's the power is in the warhead and the power is in the tail of the of the missile because that jet propulsion is going to shoot those from one end of the earth over to Babylon the Great, man. He says, for their tails were like the like unto serpents. See that? So when those missiles shot up, they go in the smoke goes any other, you know what I'm saying, goes different, zigzag. If this you know, give you a, a, a illustration of how one of them will will go in like zigzag. It looked like it's so long, it's like a snake in the air. So this is the vision John the Revelator had, man. He says, and he, and he, and his heads, and with them, they do hurt. See that? The Lord telling you, they do hurt, man. So the destruction that's coming with them, they do hurt, man. And verse 20 says, and the rest of the men which were not killed, he's talking about those elite that escaped on the underground cities and bunkers and shot up to space. And, uh, the rest of the men were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands. See that? Talking about the elites. They're going to escape the judgments of Yahweh by Shemi al to go into hardcore slavery, man. But they're not going to repent. See? They're not going to repent. They're not going to, they're not going to, to repent for all the death and destruction and mayhem that's coming on the, on the earth. They're not going to repent from it. It says that they should not worship devils. And idols of gold and silver. See that they're not gonna repent of all the all the gods that they worship, man. And the brass and stone and of wood, which there was neither can see, neither hear, neither walk. So all those things they worship are devils that have no power to do anything, man. And they did all this and destroyed. You know, it's, it's, it's all prophecy, man. You can't say they did anything, but they the Lord put on their spirit to worship the devils, man. He gave him the spirit to worship devils. And he is the devil the Bible speaks of. And that's the reason why we call Esau the devil. It says, neither repented they of their murders, nor of their the sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. See, they didn't repent for none of that. So Esau Edom is going into hardcore slavery, man. And he's going to be judged on the earth. On the earth. And we're gonna we're gonna be the ones, Lord, when we be the ones that judge them 
after Yahweh by Shem Yahweh gets his hands <laughs> off of him, man. Let's get a piece, you know what I'm saying? But, man, yes, yeah, the spirit, man. The water Yahweh by Shem Yahweh for this truth, man, giving us an opportunity to repent, man, from all the, the things we've been through in this in this captivity, man. So I'm in it there, Lord willing, was edifying. Shalom. Shalom. All right.